entering tonight. Battle of the Kellys here between these two head coaches. <laughs> Kelly Ray Finley won big in this matchup last year, an 84-59 win against number seven, Tennessee. There you see the record underneath, 32-13 and 13 as Gator head coach. Meanwhile, for the Tennessee Lady Vols, we mentioned they come in at 8-6 and six to the first 14 games getting set for the start of conference play. They're led by Kelly Harper in her fourth season. Really good crowd here to start SEC play, Brittany. There's Kelly Harper. You see the resume, went to the Sweet 16 last year in 25 games. And not only the coaching resume, she has a playing resume that will <laughs> you'd be shocked with. Right. She is so, so good on the court and when she's coaching. Tennessee wins the opening tap. They have the same starting five for a fifth straight game as Ricards picks the pocket of Horston. Gators want to get out and run. Rimdahl runs the floor for two. And just what Florida wanted to do early, turn Tennessee over and then score immediately. Say, we're here to play. This is our game and this is our court. Some bookkeeping to take care of before we continue on this one. No Tamari Key, of course, for Tennessee. As you take a look at their starting five, they're finding others to step up. Sarah Puckett, Caroline Stripling. You have Tess Darby in that front court. Jordan Walker and Jordan Horston round out that starting five as you get a turnover there from Tennessee. And that is the fifth straight game with that starting five for the Lady Vols. Meanwhile, for the Gators, a similar starting five, a seventh straight game with Rimdahl, Deans, Ricard, Stute, and Rashea Kyle. They had a nine-game win streak snapped against Oklahoma on the 21st as Deans airballs a three. Tennessee played the other night. Gators have not played in about eight days. Jordan Walker runs the floor. And now the Tennessee fans yeah. can take a seat. They do it at home and on, on away games. They stand until that first point is scored. This brand continues to travel a lot of fans. A lot of Tennessee orange in the crowd tonight. Due to rare three-point attempts, can't hit. Horst in the uncontested board. Horston has something to prove in this matchup. Just five points against the Gators last year. Goes rumbling into the paint. Got fouled by Ricards. Now Horston, you can see how much taller she is at that almost point guard position, guard position. She sits at, stands at 6'2", but plays you know, like a guard. And so that's something difficult to guard. You're going to see a lot of Florida's players right now. They have Nina Ricards on her, one of their better defenders to try to slow her down a little bit. But expect her to do exactly what she did in this game. Get to the line. She does a very good job of getting to the line. 38th on the all-time scoring list at Tennessee, over 1,100 points, trying to become the fourth Lady Vol with over 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 400 assists. And that would come with prestige company. That's right. Kelly Harper said she is just a pro in her work rate and how she gets ready and how she's blossomed into a leader. Here's Ricards. Good box out underneath. That's Horston who's fired up early. Uh, she remembers the game. Yeah, she's From one of those season, players yeah. that Kelly Harper said, oh, yeah, we remember. It's burnt into our memory last year, an 84-59 Gator win. And you almost saw it with the rebound that she just got right there and the intensity that she brought it down with. It's early in this game, and she knows what it means and how hard it is to win on the road in the SEC, especially in season openers, because, you know, like we talked about, sometimes, you know, they've played a really tough schedule, Tennessee has, so they've seen tough, tough competition, SEC-like and SEC-caliber competition in the pre-SEC season, but they know game in and game out, you have to perform, especially on the road, and they've turned the ball over early in this game. We'll see if they can clean it up here in the first quarter, but turning it over again right now. Yeah, it's Striplin who picks up the foul. And you look at the record, you know, Tennessee teams, you're not used to having an eight and six no. pre-SEC play record, but context is big here. Number one, strength of schedule. They played five teams that are currently in the AP top 10, including Stanford a couple games ago, in which they had a lead going into the fourth quarter. Stanford's the number two team in the country. Here's now Ricards. Rashea Kyle trying to extend the range, pops out for Puckett. Tennessee's only taken one shot so far. And a lot of that is because they can't take care of the basketball. Yeah. Uh, they've got their pocket picked in one play, and now trying to turn the ball almost over almost in transition. You look at the numbers in the last five, the assist numbers are high and the turnover numbers are low. That's a recipe for success. That's what Kelly Harper wants. She wants that. She wants you to take care of the basketball, value each and every possession. 
And last season against Florida, that's not something that they did. So they want to do that here tonight. Early on, they haven't done that quite yet. Tess Darby off the mark, the best three-point shooter for the Lady Vols. Put back, no. Third try for Horston. Leah Weiss, newly checked in, finally rips it out of the air. Gators have never beaten Tennessee in back-to-back -back games ever. That's on the line tonight, as well as their 800th program victory all time. And boy, wouldn't that be something special for Florida to get their 800th win against Tennessee. Rimdahl closed out by the lengthy Darby. Only five to shoot now. Ricard, late in the clock. Works in on Horston. Lost the dribble with one. Gators don't get a shot off. Good defense for the big orange. A great defense by Tennessee. Arms extended defensively, moving on the fly to the ball. You see the all-time series dominant from Tennessee. Brittany, you were a part yeah, of one of those Gator one, victories. One of those wins on the road. It's something special when you can win at T Tennessee and Thompson Bowl Arena uh, yeah. on their senior night. It was a, a very special night for us in our Florida program. I think you dropped 28 that night, right, mm -hmm. Brittany? 29. Person sitting, yeah, not like not <laughs> Gotta, like gotta get that extra right? point against Tennessee. But it was a very special team win. It was one of the first times that Florida's won there as a program. And, uh, you know, we had had our beat-ups. We had gotten beaten up by Tennessee in our four years playing. So it was a, a very special time for us. And, you know, hopefully just the start of a stepping stone of Florida getting more chances to do that. Meanwhile, tie up will be Florida with the alternate arrow. You see Rakia Jackson has come in. She's off the bench for a fifth consecutive game. She's the team's leading scorer uh, off the say, bench. I was going to say, when you have your leading scorer come off the bench, that's something hard to mess with. Jillian Hollingshed, the Georgia transfer, is in as well. Ricards knocks it down. And for Florida, if Nina Ricards can get going in that mid-range game, she's very special. Oh, Tati Weiss, the call of travel prior to the block. Meanwhile, Lady Ball still down. Sarah Puckett slow to get to her feet. In transition, Florida late to get back, but the recovery and the block doesn't get the foul, but the travel beforehand, almost in stride. Florida's Weiss does a good job kind of cutting her off, and she thought she had a lane to the basket, and because of that, she didn't put the ball down. Gators playing with the Weiss twin sisters on the floor here early in the opening quarter. Gators without Correa and Merritt here tonight. Ricards. Can't finish, did everything but finish at the bucket. Another tie up this time, will go to Tennessee. And you know, you, yeah, she knows it too. It was a great move to the basket, showing off the ball skills that she has to get around the Tennessee defender. But then you know, when you get to the lane, you gotta be able to finish. She knows she wants to get that one back. Well, if you love offense, you might wanna <laughs> you know, shut your ears for the moment. Tennessee, just a one of four start. The Gators two of seven from the floor. Maybe some start of SEC play jitters, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of jitters when you step on the floor for the first SEC game. You know, uh, it's a lot tougher competition, and so you've got to come to play, and maybe after a couple minutes, it kind of dies down a little. It certainly is an adjustment with the height you're facing, yes. athleticism. And, and for for Florida and, and Tennessee alike in some of their games, they, they were the dominant player. They were the dominant in size and athleticism. And so now, right now, you're having to, you know, size up and play a little bit stronger down low. You got to rebound the basketball, and and that's something Tennessee and coach was talking about. They want to be better at rebounding the basketball. They know they have to win the rebounding battle every game in the SEC. Hollingshed gets a late in the clock look. They get a foul here. We'll go on Tati Weish underneath. Hollingshed, a Georgia transfer, spent some time in concussion protocol earlier this year. Dealt with injury most of last year with the Bulldogs. It's swelling in her knee. Of course, Joni Taylor moving on to Texas A&M, so a lot of defections from the Georgia program to different spots. It's a nice piece. It's a good find Sophomore. by Tennessee. Yeah. Young in her career, but so much talent and ability. She had one of her best performances last year against the Gators on this floor, an eight-point performance. Deans turns the corner, tough contested look, but contact. Jasmine Powell picks up the foul. You look at KK Deans, you know, talking to a lot of people around this program, under-recruited because of her size, eventually yeah. went to West Virginia, just at a 5'8 stature, was told a lot she couldn't do certain yeah. things. And that's play at this, including play at this level. At a 5'8 stature, she's this team's 
leading scorer. She's the heartbeat, the pulse, whatever you want to say. She's been it this year. Uh, she definitely has been, and she's a player who, you know, when she's told she can't do it, she's going to work even harder to prove to you that she can do it. And that's what she's done with this Florida program, transferring in. You know, she was an immediate bucket, and a rare miss from her, two misses from the free throw line where in the pre-SEC play, you know, she was almost automatic from there. But you know, she's just the type of player who, if you ask her to, to you know, we need you to defend harder, she's going to do that. If we need you to score, she's going to do that. Well, Brittany, how about that move from Rakia Jackson? Nice. Outstanding. Rimdahl quickly with the response. And for Florida, that's what they have to do. When Rakia Jackson makes a move like that, a fancy move to the best, it's, it's nice. You have to have a quick response. And Bertie Rimdahl did exactly that. Tennessee was slow to get back, and she took advantage. They're going to say that Hollingshed stepped out, so no whistle for a foul. The offense hasn't quite been there here in the first five and change minutes. We're knotted up at six to start SEC play. Rakia Jackson trying to do a lot of that here tonight. Rimdahl with a quick answer. Tied up at six. Personal reason. So two of their top performers are out. I was going to say, those are two performers for Florida that would make a big difference, especially when you come into SEC play. Those are the type of players who you, know, you can turn to for when you need points. When you need a run, they can make a run on their own. And you know, people who are stepping up and doing that right now for this Florida program are Nina Ricard. She's had games where she's had to do that. KK Deans has had games where she's had to step up and almost go on a mini run of her own to help keep Florida in the game or possibly win. Jasmine Powell playing the point with this configuration of five on the floor for the Lady Vols. Of course, no Tamari Key for the rest of the season. Foul with blood clots in her lung. So that's a, a big time player, especially a shot blocker at the uh, rim that you don't have at 6'6". Six, six. Uh, she's a, a force to be reckoned with down low. Always have to second guess her. You know, think about when you're going inside when Key was in the paint. Michael Perry can't finish out the cup. They do the rebound and the stick back. In this game, we've seen early on both teams relentless on the offensive boards. Jasmine Powell zipping to the cup. Rashea Kyle rescues the rebound. Now Rimdahl playing the point for the Gators. Perry wide open. No. Perry hasn't played a whole lot of minutes to start the year, but she's going to have to tonight with the injury. She's going to have to play, and she's going to have to do exactly what she just did. You can't be you know, gun-shy when you come in because you haven't played a lot of minutes. You get an open shot like that against this Tennessee team in transition, you have to take it. Sometimes, especially in a game like this, it's a 6-8 game. You've got to take it when you can. And well, you mentioned who's not in this game uh, for Tennessee. No Tamari Key, a senior presence out for the season, announced on December 8th. Missed a game on December 6th, was the first game she had ever missed in her Lady yeah. Vol career, and announced officially out two days later, all-time blocks leader in Tennessee. Uh, in, in talking with her coach today, they said she is doing better and she's yeah. doing fine, and I think that helps you as a teammate, knowing that your teammate who's out for a reason like that is doing okay. And um, it's just a time for you to step up. That's a big gap for Tennessee, but a lot of players are coming together and producing, and it's not just one person, it's a group of players for Tennessee that are stepping up to fill that void that Key leaves you when she's out. Jackson in isolation, ripped away by KK Deans. One on one back the other way, they'll call a foul here on Rakia Jackson. And Rakia, Rakia Jackson knows right there, she had to come back and she had to get that. She wasn't gonna allow KK Deans to get the and one. And she didn't do it maliciously. She goes in there, goes for the ball, and then helps her up a afterwards. And that's the type of, of sportsmanship you like to see. And you're going in there, you're making a hard play because you can't allow her to get the and one. And and she does exactly what she needs to do. Helps her up, and, you know, gives her a high five, and keeps going. And Brittany, she was Jackson, the most notable transfer oh, addition this offseason. You, you look at the numbers she put up in three seasons at Mississippi State at 20.3 points per game in her final year there. Entered the transfer portal during the season. See that more and more now, but averaged 15 points in her previous, her first two years at Mississippi State. Uh, yeah, when you when you pick up somebody at Tennessee who's averaging 20 points per game, yeah. and they're coming to Tennessee, and right now she's coming off the bench. And so uh, that makes it difficult to guard, but that's the type of program that, that Tennessee is. They're a program that they attract players who can put up a lot of points, who can score when you're the best on your team a lot of times. Now with this new transfer portal and all the transfers that are going on, you know, they're seeking out teams like Tennessee. Well, Brittany, this is already the ninth Tennessee turnover. This is very much like last year's meeting. 
It's a 9-2 edge for the Gators in turnovers so far. Not what Kelly Harper wants to see to start. No, it's, it's not what Kelly Harper wants to see, but it's what Kelly Ray Finley wants to see. She wants to see Tennessee turn the ball over and her Florida team produce offensively. But what Tennessee is doing a good job amongst the turnovers is playing good defense. How about Rashea Kyle with the rebound off the glass? Here's on an 8-0 spurt right now to take a six-point lead. A two of seven beginning to the game for the Lady Vols, almost eight minutes into the opening quarter. And trying to get Jackson on a post up. It's Franklin in on Duke, spins. Nice lefty that's, touch. It's a great move by Franklin, using her body. She gets Faith Duke kind of in the air on a slide, a fake kind of pass shot under the rim, and then comes back around for an easy layup. That's a phenomenal move. Ends an 8 0 Gator run. Ricards around a screen or comfortable range. Ricards will take that all night if they all, give it to All night. Her. If Franklin's going to sit in the paint at the SEC logo, I don't think she realized who the screen was set for. She's got to get out there because Nina you know, Ricards doesn't miss a lot of those shots. Good defensive block by Florida down low. Shea Kyle with some words for Rakia Jackson back and forth. Kelly Ray Finley saying, let's calm that down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you got you to calm that down a little bit. Coming inside, getting a block. Hands off, Tennessee's going to get it back. That's a good block down low. I'll Jay say this, Kyle. Brittany, I don't think Rakeem Jackson is one of those players you want to anger. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> she, you get you get her a little bit mad, she kind of goes off. Buckets. Yeah, she, she gets buckets in a big way. Post touch here for Striplin and a three second. Boy, this has been sloppy for I, Tennessee. I've noticed that early in the Tennessee game. Uh, I don't remember who it was. It was Franklin or someone inside posting up down low, and I was thinking they better get out of the paint. As, as a you know, former post player, you kind of get in there and you see like, that's a, that's a lot of seconds down there. Yeah, you have that mental she better, clock built she in. She better get in and out, and they didn't call it the, the previous time, but they called it that time. Rimdahl in tight traffic will get a foul here on Justine Passat, freshman. The freshman in her first SEC game, coming in, trying to get that block on Birdie Rimdahl. And Birdie, a player who, she's a, a three-point threat for Florida, but she's also an attacker. She has an attack mentality if you take away the three-point threat. First on Passat, got to mention it, Passat native of Toms River, New right. Jersey. You've been waiting for this one. Some time down there, the good old Jersey Shore. Is that where the right show? Right by where I grew up, you know, going on vacation around Seaside Heights, that area. Is that where the show comes for, from, Jersey yeah, Shore? Jersey that's, Shore. That's the actual town? You know, it's really sad. That's the only thing you know about New Jersey, <laughs> the MTV show. Can't say that I ever watched it, but I did hear the name. Long heave, Franklin able to rescue it. And a reset. Powell will hoist. Can't hit. Passat right on cue, the stick back. And she knew that was going in, almost a Steph Curry backup after yeah. she tipped that one in. Great ball movement by Tennessee on the offensive end to get an open shot. Ricards and a good rebound. Runs into a buzzsaw. Passat runs the floor. Back to back buckets for the freshman. And after what has been essentially an awful quarter for Tennessee taking care of the basketball, they're within two. The Gators have not been able to take advantage. Just a 33% beginning and shooting the ball. Look at a foul here on Puckett. And for Florida, that's something you have to do. If Tennessee's going to turn the ball over as many times as they have in the first quarter, you have to be able to take advantage offensively. You have to be able to hit shots and find a way. Either that's hitting shots or getting to the line to get free throws. But when you turn Tennessee over that many times, you have to take advantage. Gators have had 10 points off turnovers, but overall for the floor, just five of 15. Meanwhile, coming in, Jordan Walker re-enters for Sarah Puckett. Gators will send one of their best free throw percentage shooters to the line, Anita Ricards at 82%. That's fair to say I jinxed her that, Brittany. 82% foul shooter misses the first. And splits a pair. Yeah, she says you can't get me on the second one. <laughs> Jariah Warren comes in. Florida showing some full court pressure to end this first quarter. They showed it early in the first, first quarter, kind of token defense, man to man, just to slow down Tennessee a little bit. Walker runs the point. Inside 30 seconds for the opening quarter. Passat has back-to-back -back buckets. Little step back elbow action. Gators can hold for the final shot. Rimdahl with Franklin trailing, oh. Dean's travel. 
tried a quick ball fake from the three-point line, but just slid, slid the feet a little bit too much. A little excited about the opportunity to score. I thought she might just let it fly. KK Deans is a player who she'll catch and shoot that in transition. Yeah. She'll shoot it from 30 feet, too. Final seconds of the quarter. Chance to tie with a three here for Tennessee. Ten first quarter turnovers. Powell splits a double inside. Wow. Strickland. That was nice. The Very dime nice from offense. Jasmine Powell. The bucket from Strickland and the quarter. The Gators once had a lead of six in this frame. Tennessee, all sorts of issues, but in the end, when the dust settles after one, they just trail by one. Start of SEC play, Gators and the Lady Vols. Second quarter, next. More points than they could have in that segment. Yeah, in a stretch where Tennessee's won four of the last five, during those five games, they've averaged about 14 more points off turnovers than their opponent. So that script has flipped the start. And I can, uh, I'm not, not a betting girl, but uh, I, I would like to say that in that timeout, it was addressed the turnover numbers and taking care of the basketball in the second quarter. KK Deans picks up the foul. I'm sure she kind of got after it a little bit and said, hey, we got to take care of the basketball. That is way too many turnovers in the first quarter. Played 132 career games at Tennessee. Finished seventh all-time in assists. The Lady Vols won three consecutive mm -hmm. national championships with Pat Summit in the mid-90s. Let's say to late 90s. Quite the resume. I'd say so. <laughs> All tied up. You get a moving screen here. This is on Rindolph. Maybe left too early, Brittany. Yeah, Florida's struggled with the moving screens. Uh, you can see coming off, it's just a shoulder. That was from yeah. Rindolph. Usually it's Florida's bigs getting the moving screen, but that was just kind of leaning into the screen just a little bit too much. Get the sense the momentum has shifted a little bit as Franklin adds to it, but just can't finish at the rim break for Florida because that's a wide open layup for Tennessee. Tennessee's last lead was at six to four. Warren inside for Shea Kyle, good positioning. That was a great catch by Shea Kyle down low on one hand, a right hand, she don't even know if she put her other hand, left hand on it and then yeah. finished. Last touch, Faith Duke remains good, with Tennessee. Good positioning. If you're Florida and you don't see that if, as a guard, you don't see the backside help coming, and your post player has position like that, you want to lob it to her every time. You can see she had the whole paint. I mean, the left hand barely comes and touches that. That is a great play by Florida, stretching it out, almost overloading one side. Meanwhile, Jordan Horston was wide open on the baseline out of bounds and has the deuce underneath. That's the first field goal for Jordan Horston tonight. Rindahl kicks it out, Dude, second three-point attempt, so knock it down from the corner. And that's that's where that's where Faith Dude likes to shoot it from. And that's where two of her big three-point shots came over a Thanksgiving Day tournament, were from the, the corner pocket threes. Three of 13 from distance prior to that make as Deans forces a turnover, Powell gives it up. And when you see that, you know, you're know you gonna give her a little bit of space. She already missed one at the top of the key. It's kind of one of those shots where you say, hey, we're gonna let the post player, if she's gonna beat us from outside, that's who's gonna beat us. But you know, if she's shooting like that, that's a good night for Florida. Well, Brittany, you said you're not a gambling girl. Would you have money down on Fate 2 hitting the first three and only three for the Gators so far? Probably not. Probably not. Gators one of four from the arc. Just for one of six between these two teams for three. Vision from Rimdahl. Ricards revs the engine inside. Minimal window to slip it up to the rim, and a foul's going to be called. This might be Horston. Tennessee, a team that hit 12 threes their last game out against Wofford. So uh, they can line it up from deep, but they have yet to hit one tonight. Or tonight, yes. I was thinking it might be the afternoon because sometimes these SEC games are <laughs> a Sunday afternoon. But we're Thursday right now. And only two attempts. You see Horston's definitely frustrated right now. That's her second foul, and she's been held to just three points. Uh, sometimes when you come in, maybe coming in with just a little bit too much intensity and you want to do so well in the first game, you can see the frustration on her face right now. When you pick up that second foul early in, in the second quarter, you know you're going to sit for a little while because you play a lot different. If you pick up that third foul before halftime, you have to start the second half playing a little bit different than if you only have two. 
Tess Darby chased off the line, hits the 15-footer. Gators wanted to travel on Darby. He's their best three-point percentage is. shooter, 43% from deep, but she was chased off the line that time. And you're going to run out, if you're Florida, you want to run out with a hand up, maybe cause her to try to travel, uh, but you'd rather her shoot two-point shots and three-point shots. How about this mentality right now from Rimdahl? She's not had any hesitancy. She takes it and she goes to the rim. Uh, she's a, a, a fearless player. She has a, it doesn't matter who's you know down low, but she does it smartly, too. She's gotten to the foul line the times that she's driven to the basket and hasn't scored. And so you know, she, she wants to be known not just for a three-point shooter, a, a well-rounded player, a very high basketball IQ. She finds her teammates. She gets them open. And also has a high conversion rate I, at the line. I, I didn't want to say it, but, you know, <laughs> we'll let you say it. Only one miss in her career. You do the work, people got to know the numbers, right? <laughs> I think the jinx was almost immediate there. Uh, looking, checking for blood. I think there might be a blood here. Good catch, Brittany. Yeah, and so what they'll do is they'll just get it wrapped up real quick. They're not going to make her come out of the game. This is where John McElhaney, the great athletic trainer. Oh, yeah. This is the most pressure, I think, of anybody in the building. All the right, moment. now you got to get it in quick before they have to make you send somebody else. But it's just a, a scrape, so you can see the hard work John's he puts in with a busy smile. last couple of days. He was on the, the men's trip to yeah. Auburn yesterday, going in for Duke Warner. And he gets a round of applause <laughs> from the Gator fans. John, one of the best. Let's see Birdie going to step to the line. After a little bit of a break to get that second free throw. And you got her. Well, Jake's you, might have been a little delayed there. You've gotten two Florida players already tonight. Yeah. This is her second miss of her career at the line. This is her second season. Which is interesting, too, when you talk about three point shooters. A lot of times, three point shooters are not really great free throw shooters, but she is. Their cards takes it away from Jackson, glides to the cup, can't finish. Deans, an ill advised foul. Uh, and, and that was a smart play by Rakia Jackson in transition. Slowed down and kind of just stopped and stomped. And that's kind of like a flyby play where you see, I mean, she's frustrated because she got the turnover, but she didn't go and foul. She just kind of stomps at you and then you short the, the layup. And that happens more times than you would, you would think, especially in women's basketball. And that's an extra juiced up foul yeah, for KK uh, Deans. That's one you just gotta be smarter than that. And, and Rakia Jackson, she already had the foul in transition on KK Deans, so she knew she couldn't do it again. That was a heads up play, and that's a heads up play by Tennessee. Just miscommunication defensively by Florida. Rakia Jackson wide open underneath the basket. That's probably the easiest two points she might have all game. Let's see Horston on the bench with two fouls. And she knows that she's going to have to score in this game. And you've seen Striplin a couple times in this game already play the passing lane really well. An athletic sophomore forward for this Tennessee program is Striplin. Step back for Powell. Had the mismatch speed-wise with Tati Weiss. Jackson fell down. Numbers for the Gators. Rimdahl a three. Tess Darby the rebound. Powell says, why not? Uh, Off the mark. If you don't pick up the ball, uh, a player at this level is going to shoot it every time. Rimdahl keeps it in the holster that time and will call a charge. And, uh, and while she's had that quick twitch to the rim tonight, there has been that hesitancy to hoist that three-point shot for one of the best three-point shooters for the Gators, and, and that's Rimdahl. Yeah, she's a very good three-point shooter. That's a... But eventually we'll leads to that, that charge instead of taking yeah. an open three. And that's just an aggressive play where sometimes, you know, that play gets gets a call. Sometimes it doesn't. Good play defensively by Tennessee. But just depending on how the game's ref, if you get kind of a little bit of a push off or if they're not calling it. Now you know that's what they're calling. So you got to keep that off arm away. Jackson can't connect. Has the offensive rebound. Bodies in and one. Has the extra stare for Tati Weish. That's a power play by a power girl. Down low, she had the position. She knew it off the bounce in. That's a great offensive move. If you're, yeah, you know, Tati Wise, she tries to stay straight up and not foul. She wasn't trying to foul in that position, but got the body foul. And you talked about, you know, Rikia T Jackson turning it on. She's someone you don't want to get a little angry. First lead for Tennessee since the midway mark in the opening quarter.
Dottie Weish. Good catch. Has to track it down. Good defense from Stripling. Trying to find a guard on the pivot. Gets doubled and a tie-up. And a heads up play by Tennessee. And you see Walker coming down. Weish had nowhere to go with the ball. Fuller's got to find a way. You got to go get the ball from her. You got to find a way, cut, get out of the play break, maybe run by her or something. But Walker was aware. It's a great catch. And then Weish just doesn't know what to do with the ball. And Florida's players don't really. She might have had actually over in the corner to meet him with the cards because she just didn't feel confident with giving the ball up. But heads up play by Walker to go down and get her hands on it. That's a senior going down there and saying, hey, I'm going to get a jump ball real quick on this. Only five to shoot. Ricards navigates down the lane, falling away with just one on the timer. Big buckets by the senior, Nina Ricards for Florida. Getting to the rim with just five seconds left. She's an aggressive player. She's from New York, and she doesn't back down from anybody. Yeah, Queens, New York. Yeah. Got a lot of Northeast in the house tonight. Tess Woo! Derby from the parking lot. That was a logo three. That was a confidence three. You gotta go a little bit closer on her. Rimdahl got stripped out of bounds. Tess Darby entering yeah. had nine more threes than the next best Lady Vol. She's been incredibly efficient over the last four, eight of 16 from three. Huh, I, I mean, she has 62 attempts. 51 of them are from the three-point line. So you know she's going to let it fly. You've got to play her really tight. Force her to put the ball on the ground for a one or two dribble pull-up or a drive to the basket where you maybe have help side defense and can get a charge. But don't allow her to catch and shoot. Ricards around a screen. Finds the screener, Dute, lefty flip shot. Swirls out, we're gonna foul on the floor. <laughs> it looks like That's you got Rashea, be... Kyle, and Jordan Walker riding yeah, a, a I think toboggan. that might be on <laughs> Walker, trying to box out and gets called with a foul underneath, getting an explanation from the referees. Take another look move. before the break. Uh, just a, oh, a wrap around. So you can see in that it's she a, wrapped her arms around Kyle and was pushing her back. It's a good pushback. There's an old bobsled <laughs> move right there between those two. Lady Vols by two. The SEC to start with, you know they're going to work their way back up and, and see where they finish. We're not surprised at all, really, with South Carolina at the top of the pack and, and running that as well as LSU with the you know year that they had last year as well. Right now in the league, you have four teams in the top 25 of the yep. net ranking, which is the biggest tool they use come NCAA tournament time to judge whether you're a tournament team. Uh, and that's one of the things about the SEC and why you see the SEC get so many teams into the NCAA tournament is because it's such a tough conference. There, there's going to be you know, multiple teams in the top 10 at any given time of the season, and you're having to play them. There's no night off in this league. There's a good chance at any given night you get a top 50 yes. net rank opportunity yeah. for a win. And that can be a, a really big win and a really big boost for your standings at the end of the season. Faye Dude can't connect. Good defense from Rakia Jackson. Jordan Horston remains on the bench with her two personal fouls. We'll see if we see her before the break. And, and to note with the two personal fouls for Florida, KK Deans and Bertie Rimdahl also have two fouls, as well as Tati Weish. Yeah, they both stay out on the floor because the Gators right now don't have many options. They don't have many options. They can't afford for them to be off the court. Powell can't hit Jackson another rebound and that advantage on the glass continues to swell for Tennessee. Uh, Florida's gonna have to do a better job of boxing out, putting a body on someone and pushing them back, get inside position. This is not a team where you can just say, hey, I'm gonna out jump you and we're gonna jump until someone gets the ball because Tennessee is a very tall team, a very physical team down low, so you've gotta put a body on them. Plus eight on the glass wow. right now for the Vols. Ricards trying to find somebody to come to the basketball with three. Deans from the logo. Kelly Harper says, we've become a much more improved defensive team over the last handful of games. Big part of us growing our identity. And I think that comes from the fact that she was such a great defender. She knows how important it is to play defense. She was one of those players who, who got down, got in a stance, and defended so well every game and so she knows hey we have to do that and we want to be a team that is known for their defense. Powell late in the clock with one. Long rebound for Deans doesn't have numbers. Will slash in anyway the runner. Holling shed the rebound. Deans still without a field goal made. Jackson. That was pretty. That was real nice. 
That was a real nice crossover, and Brody Rimdahl couldn't do too much, but she can't pick up another foul, so she had to stay off a little bit. Game best lead for the Lady Vols at six. Jackson now in double figures with 11. Team's leading score, a little shake and bake in the pull-up. A little in and out and then a crossover. And again, you know, Florida, she knew Birdie has two fouls. I don't know if she knows Birdie has two fouls, but Birdie has two fouls, so she's backing off. Did it prior to her arrival at Tennessee, so they know how it works, and it works for them. You know, it's and interesting, too, in Tennessee to have that family connection on the softball side, too. I was going to say too. the same Karen thing, yeah. and Ralph Weekly were co-head coaches for a long time before Ralph retired recently. It's a real family affair in Tennessee. Right now, 7-0 run for the Lady Vols. Gators in desperate need of a basket. That was a good timeout for Florida to take because they needed a little reset, not allow Tennessee to go on a huge run. Can they have an answer here out of the timeout? Dean's got it swatted out by Hollingshed. Much different defensive intensity right now. Yeah, there's Tennessee. a different a defensive intensity, I feel like, in this whole second quarter for Tennessee, but especially here the last couple minutes. I think they want to go into this halftime with a bigger lead than they have right now, and they know that comes from the defensive end. There's a 3 of 10 quarter for the Gators in the second. Rindall had the switch with Hollingshed. Shot clock again, dripping down. Deans off balance, had it swatted out, so only three to shoot. Gators just came to get a look at the rim at the moment. And you can see on the bench, Florida's assistant coach CJ up, up saying, hey, we got three seconds, three seconds. Everybody needs to be aware that we have three seconds. So it's gotta be a catch and shoot is what she's saying. You got one dribble maybe in. Rimdahl Ooh. up to the rim with one. And, and that's a smart play, get her across. She knows that she's gotta get it up quick. She does that. And in, in amongst the, the trees and the giants. Very big bucket that's for the That's a huge bucket. Late in second. Brooklyn Miles is in around the point, the sophomore guard, just nine minutes a game. Promptly threw it away. KK Deans, can she finish in transit? She can. KK And it's interesting how just a, a shot like that can change. That last second, three second shot that Brody Rimdahl gets off, and then KK Deans playing the passing like extremely well. That's, that's a third or fourth like tip to a turnover and a layup that she's got. Look at that. I mean, just awareness to go around Tennessee. They don't want to foul in a situation like that, so you're kind of playing hands up. But she's just, it just shows how crafty she is with the basketball offensively to go around defensive players. She leads the way for the Gators with none. And, and none of them from the three-point line. Post touch for Jackson. Fades and fires. Saved by Ricard somehow going to the photogs underneath. Deans lumbers down the lane, the kiss off the window. Another bucket for KK, approaching near 1,000 career points. She's 18 away. And KK Deans a guard who can use her body to get into the paint like she did. Jackson, the rebound underneath, can't stick it back. Hollingshed tries to save it, last touch, Florida. And I just like the battle that's going on down low on both ends from both teams. You know, they know the importance of rebounding and getting in there, and you can see the second and third chance opportunities that Tennessee is getting on this possession alone. You see the rebounding differential, 22 to 13. The second chance points margin is not big though. No, seven to six it, in favor of Tennessee. It's not because a lot of those times Tennessee hasn't been able to convert when they get right. the offensive buckets, or they get it and then they turn the ball over. Deans again active in the passing lane. I, I mean, I'd like to see how many times Florida has played. KK Deans and Nina Ricards have been active on those ball reversals, and Tennessee's still making the pass. Here's Powell, oh, and that's, that's the third on Rimdahl, and, and it's she, an and one. And she tried to back off. You can see she tried to turn her body because she knew, and I and I think they knew that she has two fouls and they wanted to get her out of the game. But she tries to back off. That's uh, she she knew it too, but just a little body foul, and that's just really kind of a veteran move by Powell. She knows she got her on her hip and kind of used her body to back in to Birdie Rimdahl to create that foul. Jasmine Powell transfer from Minnesota. Yeah, chases cold. Rimdahl to the bench. Yeah, very cold. That's there. really cold. 
She's nearing 1,000 career points as well. Enter with 961 in her career. She's a senior. Lady Vols back by three. Warren off the curl, races in, kicks out Leah Weish. Franklin stepped out, and they will say Man, She threw Florida. it off of Florida. Yeah. Good play. Good play by Franklin, and giving the extra effort, knowing she was going to be out of bounds, throws it off the Florida player. And then the important thing about that is sometimes what players will do is they'll throw it off the player in bounds, but then they'll catch it out of standing out of bounds, out of reaction. And if you do that, it's a turnover on you because you're standing out of bounds. Instant offense back in. Rakia Jackson on the floor for the Lady Vols as Kelly Harper went right back to her bench. About a seven second differential between the two clocks. Walker inside for Jackson, fouled by Tati Weish. And Brittany for Tati Weish, that's her third. So the Gators have a pair of players with three fouls. Still in the first half. Uh, and, and we see Rakia Jackson back at the free throw line. And she's a player who, who usually is there a lot more than she is right now. She leads the team in getting to the line with 53 attempts on the season so far. Remember, Lady Vols playing without Horston for most yeah. of this half. She's only played five minutes because she picked up an early two. I, I was just thinking that, that Tennessee's you know, up three, but one of their big hitters has been sitting on the bench the majority of this half. And the luxury of having a, a yep. star in this league in Rakia Jackson <laughs> to keep this team afloat. Scoring wise. Uh, uh, yeah, when you have a backup that's coming in that last year averaged 20 points per game in the SEC, to lean on really helps a lot. So the lead up to five as Striplin is in. Big, big possession offensively for Florida here, Kyle. Kyle and Dute on the floor for the Gators in the front court. Shot clock is unplugged. Gators can hold for the final shot. See if Deans gets this look. Run a Dute screen. Deans spinning back and forth. Rashea Kyle, the jumper. That's short with two. Does Powell get a shot off? No. And Brittany, that brings us to a close of the half. And Tennessee, who trailed for about nine minutes of that half, will take a five-point lead going into the break. And I think Florida will take a only down five here with the way that they've been playing. And you know, they've been playing hard, and now it's the second half, and it's a five-point game. Kia Jackson leads the way for the Lady Vols with 13. And Gators have some foul trouble with Rimdahl with three, and Tati Weish with three as well. Gators looking for back-to-back -back wins against the Lady Vols for the first time ever. Halftime show, but we come back to Gainesville. That's right. Florida can't afford to have her on the bench. She just has to be really careful here in the start of the third quarter. Interesting number between these two in SEC openers. Tennessee's won eight straight. Florida's lost eight straight. As Dute gets a hand in the passing lane. Uh, Dute was behind the play, but able to reach around without fouling and get a tip. And she got beat back door, but was able to recover. Walker will inbound. Striplin. And Rache Kyle gets the rebound. Original starting five for both of these teams as Deans can't handle it. Rimdahl threw it away. And Kyle, someone for Florida, you'd like to see her get in this game you know, her double digit rebounds if she can. She's sitting at five right now. They need her to have a big post presence this second half, especially on the rebounding front. Again for the Gators, no Leilani Correa, no Jordan Merritt. They hope to get those two back soon. And no Tamari Key for Tennessee, who's out for the season. Of course, that was announced on December 8th, so they haven't played with her for the last five games. Tess Darby underneath, Horston behind the defense. That was a great play off the ball. Horston moving well without the ball, kind of off the off screen, kind of curl around to get open, and Florida was playing behind. And if you play behind this Tennessee team like that, they're going to score more times than they don't. A danger moment here for the Gators, down seven. Didn't get many looks at the rim late in the first half. Faith Duke, not the optimal look, did have a three make in the first half. And, and what Tennessee is doing off Faith Duke right now is the, the backside help is coming from the top where Faith Duke is. That post player is sinking down on that backside help for Kyle. Here's that last bucket on the prior trip. Oh, it's just a great curl. Nina Ricards gets caught behind off, I think, an off-ball screen, kind of gets clipped with it, and Tennessee was wide open. 
Good positioning oh. for Puckett. Great positioning, great move. I, I really like the move and the hook shot. If, if the player and defender is behind you, if Puckett has you sealed like that, that's points every single time. She just backed down a quick move, and, and I'm a real fan of that hook shot over the middle. Tennessee outscored the Gators 22 to 16 in the second. Gators, they're trying to find answers right now. Kelly Ray Finley can sense this group needs a talking to. As we'll step aside, 90 seconds into the third, Tennessee has scored all four, lead by a game best nine. Everybody around the league getting it started here tonight. Tennessee a nine point edge early in the third quarter. Back underway. Gators in desperate need of a basket. Kelly Ray Finley forced to use an early timeout to try and regroup. Yeah, this had the feeling of maybe Florida would have rather not have halftime break. Sometimes that halftime break can help you. Sometimes it kind of hurts the momentum that you have and that Florida was playing with. Horston. Loose ball for Rindall. Horston wanted a foul. Roche Kyle slow to get to her feet. Gators don't have the numbers. Cards on a tough angle. Gators still scoreless in this frame out of the halftime break. Horston says why not. Got it. Uh, she had a slow start to her game. She said not the second half. Uh, she knows she has some time to make up with points wise. Eight points tonight. Averages just under 16. Had to sit for a lot of the first half, so she's ready to play. She has got fresh legs than everybody else on the court right now. Inside, Roche and Kyle fights one up. No, swatted out. Striplin does get out of play. In transition, no one picks up Horston, and that's the mistake number one. They backed off. KK Deans was going to help in the middle. Uh, she's a catch and shoot. She's a scorer. She's a threat. Yeah, she's a senior who knows th that she's. This is the last time she'll, you know, possibly play here, and so you know you want to make the most of every game. And has gotten better against the best competition. Three double doubles against the AP yes. top 15. And that's what you can kind of look at. What players step up against better competition? And she's definitely one of those players who, when the better competition comes, she doesn't shy away from it, but instead she shines. Well, the Gators have hit a brick wall offensively. This is the time where Florida, uh, they've struggled in the third quarter sometimes, and, and you do not want to struggle against this Tennessee team here in the third quarter. You see they're picking up their full court defense, everybody up defensively. And when you're playing like this, you got to be careful of not getting beat long. All seven have been scored by Tennessee out of the locker room, and now Horston, who also can play just about every position, yep. will play the point. She's a very unique talent where she can play at that point guard position, but if she needs to go post up down low against a guard who's on her, she can do that. And KK Deans picks up another foul trying to deny that handoff. That's her third. And yeah, so a third player with three. And two of those at the guard position. This is an interesting number that popped out. 24 bench points for Tennessee. Gators don't have a single bench point tonight. Back door, Puckett glides to the cup, too strong. That was open. That was good luck. Gators looking for their first points out of the half. Last field goal at the 129 marker of the second. Ricards chased off the line, contorts to the cup, still nothing. Great help side defense by Tennessee. Man to man going over and covering is Jackson kind of have that token defense and cause that turnover. Everything contested on the Gator offensive end, nothing easy. Horston swings the crossover. This will be stripped out. Warren was the one who got the assignment. And you know really what we haven't uh, seen a ton of it in this game is Horston and her kid Jackson on the floor at the same time yeah. because of those fouls. It's interesting to see if we see that here in the third some. Both start of the year in the starting lineup. Good block. Clean block from Jariah Warren. And that's something Jariah Warren, she brings some length. She might be undersized having to play against, you know, a post player on that switch, but hand straight up, she can block shots. Concerted effort to get it to Horson, who's still looking for a whistle. 
Testorby rings the rim from deep. Dean's the rebound. Rim doll. Again, had that open look. And assistant coaches on the bench were standing up ready for a three. Deans falls down, timer on. Again, nothing the swarming easy. defense by Tennessee right now against this Florida team. Duke, the up fake just banged it up too strong. Great move to the basket, just couldn't finish. It's a strong up and under, kind of shot fake move. Good ball movement by Tennessee. They might check, I was gonna say, if that went in, they might have to check that. Darby had the open look underneath. Thread the needle, Rimdahl got fouled, and a chance Ooh. for the first points of this quarter. Great pass in the defense of Tennessee, really in the heart of that. They had three people back. KK Dean sees it and just goes right in the middle of you know, two Tennessee players that are kind of you know log lollygagging back, not knowing that Bertie Rimdahl's on that back side, or they know she's there, but they don't think KK Dean's gonna make that pass, and she does. Foul was called on Stripling, that's just her first. Florida's got to get some points here in this third quarter. Walker, Darby come out, Striplin and Puckett. Essentially, you got a whole new five besides Jordan Horston. She stays on. So you got and Jackson, you got your wish. Jackson yeah. and Horston on the floor at the I'm same time. see them play together. Well, Brittany Rimdahl. Rare, rare miss. And only missed one free throw in her career. Entering the night, she's missed two tonight. 95% uh, coming into the, to the game. And both of them were uh, the front of the, the two shots. And there's the first, that's the first point Florida has in this third quarter, Kyle. That's to note with 5.15 left. Jackson won't be denied. Not sure how the Gators match up yeah, against this it, When she's driving like that, Florida's going to have to come and send some uh, a double team. You can't allow her to get to the paint as easily as she does. Ripped off. Soft feathery touch. I mean, he got the defense on her hip and just goes right in. Can the Gators get enough stops? Yeah, There's she's one. The leading scorer for Florida right now with 12 points. I like the decision by Florida. Go back to Birdie Rindle. And she produces. Uh, she's got the hot hand right now. She's your leading scorer. Put it in her hands and let her decide what to do with it. There's been so many moments throughout her career here where they've tried to drill it in her head. You have to shoot. You have to shoot. Well, I mean, she, she needs to shoot, in my opinion, for this Florida team. She's got to get the, the shot attempts up. But with what they have right now, especially with Ilani Correa on the bench right now, somebody else has to get the shots up at the guard position. And, you know, right now, high percentage, five of six from the field. Gonna foul the floor. This is on the Gators. We see the leading scores. Rimdahl five of six from the floor tonight. Jackson with 15 of her own. Back in this ball game against a very good Tennessee team who's dominating the glass right now. 32 rebounds to Florida's 19. And one for Rakia Jackson. Great draw. That was a great underneath out of bounds. Got to worry about a lot of threats, and then we talked about how she is so powerful down low, just attacking the basket and then going up strong to finish. Double figures in 11 of her last 12. Horston couldn't grab the rebound. On that replay, Florida's really lucky that they didn't call that foul on Bertie Rimdahl, because that would have been her fourth. Yeah. It's Rimdahl, Leah Weish, Roche, and Kyle, Nita Ricards, and Jariah Warrens, and OKK Deans at the moment. Offense running through number five. Rimdahl gives it up, Roche, and Kyle. Back tap, Ricards gets a recycled 20. Now another opportunity to Florida to reset, get a better look. They get it to Birdie, and she knocks it down on cue. Took a long time to get yeah, there on that but position. She gave it up a couple times, got it back. Good rebound by Nina Ricard to give Florida a second look and not just a one-shot opportunity. 
Alberti Rimdahl's career high is 19. She's had that twice this year. She's resting at 16 points. Uh, and right now, I think it's for Florida. She has the hot hand. Can somebody else step up and get a couple buckets here to help her out? Rakia Jackson off the curl. It's kind of a back and forth. You got Birdie Rimdahl and Rakia Jackson scoring back and forth. Jackson now with 19. Rashea Kyle digs in the lane. The scoop shot, she'll get two. Kyle getting her defense uh, off the mark with the attack to the basket, kind of a little head fake, shot fake, like she was going to shoot it from that baseline side and then attacks hard to the right-hand side from the left. Finds herself at the free throw line. Now, can she step to the line and hit free throws where she struggled a little bit for this Florida program? Shea Kyle double doubles in her last two. Started the last eight games. Had a double double against Oklahoma before the break with 16 points, 13 yeah, that's, rebounds. It's a great confidence booster against a very good Oklahoma team. Dealt with an injury last year at Purdue, her first year in the Gator program. It's both. Shea Kyle comes out, Tati White, she's in. She has three personal fouls. Gators will press up a little bit here, Brittany, defensively. Uh, they've got to try to slow Tennessee down in the half court, and that's what they're doing. They're not necessarily going to set traps, but they're just trying to slow them down, not just allow them to throw the ball in and get back on defense. Kind of keeps you, you know, ready defensively from the tip. How about Warren getting the assignment on Horston? They go right to it. Horston missed it. Second effort. And makes it true. They were going right to her. I mean, she stored back-to-back -back buckets. Just so hard to stop when yeah, she gets she that is position. So hard to stop. And she's good at getting the position. She gets the position early. So she's down there, and you have the defense on your back. You're going to give it to her every time. Get yeah, a foul here. Going against Florida. Tati Weish, her fourth. And trying to get to the to the glass to rebound, but you got to have that inside position or you're going to get that foul call. And that's something. You know, they're great rebounders, the Weish sisters. But you just have to be careful when you know you got the size here in the SEC, so you got to get the inside position. And the Gators, no Correa and no Merritt tonight. You wonder if they have the horses defensively in a lineup that has Horston and Jackson uh, that's, on the that floor at the same time. Right up for this Florida team, once they started playing together, you know, how is Florida going to defend that? Because they really only had to defend one in the first half and it changes where you can send doubles because you can't really double off of them. Jasmine Powell with contact able to finish. That's Leah Weish on the foul at the bucket. That's a strong attack. Weak side, rejects the screen and then comes over. And that's just a late, late help. Florida's late coming over. If you're gonna come, you gotta come sooner or don't come at all because you're underneath the basket. She already had the, the ball out of her hand and then you get the foul almost after she's released the ball. Powell, who was held scoreless for the first time in her Lady Vol career against Wofford, cannot complete the three-point play. Gators in need of another answer. Played without Deans for most of this third quarter. And a lot of times they've gone to Nina Ricard when they need an answer in games scoring-wise. Oh, Great good pass. pass from Rindahl and Kyle finishes. Woo! Across the defense, going to her left, Great passes it back to the right. Great hands by Shea Kyle down low. Big Shea, as she likes to be called sometimes, had great hands. Finishing. Jariah Warren in the passing lane all alone for two. Sometimes yep. you get in your head on those when you're all yeah, alone. Yeah, when you're all alone. So those are, those are risky ones. No one followed back behind. She was wide open. That was a, a good layup, good finish, a little boost for Florida to end this third quarter. Can they close out with a defensive stop? Jackson has the height mismatch on Ricards. Hauling shit along, too. Ricards, good box oh, out. Good backside tip. Strip towards Jackson and one. And Nina Ricards has the box out down low, but Tennessee, I don't know who it was, it was Verkia or, or Horton down low. I think it was someone with the, the blue head fan. Got that tip on the backhand side. You can see the defensive stop and then the put back, finish, and one. There's about three or four of those and ones here tonight. Fourth game this year for Rakia Jackson with 20 or more. Oh, what a pickup for Tennessee. 
She's 9 of 12 from the floor. Efficiency. And they aren't all layups. And a lot of them are, are fading yeah, jumpers. Yeah, they turn around. One of them was a real nice just kind of shimmy and shake with her back to the basket, turn around jumper. Leah Weish earned her second foul on that sequence. And just when Florida was going on a little bit of a run to kind of close that gap and into this third quarter, Tennessee has a response. About a second differential here. Ricard's looking for help. We'll get a foul underneath. It's going to go on Jasmine Franklin off the ball. Uh, her and Shea Kyle down the battling for position. And Franklin gets called with the foul. No a little too physical. Throws. That's the third team foul for Tennessee. So now Florida, all of the 13 seconds, no yeah. difference. And the shot clock with the underneath out of bounds. So now they can hold for the final shot. Ricard's elects to take it right away. A tough look. Tennessee capitalized here. Final possession of the quarter. Powell with three. Inside Jackson. Double comes. Lost it out of bounds with 1.2. So your best baseline out of bounds. What do you got? Jordan Horst will yeah, join the party. Come back in and you got more coming back in. With Darby. Good hands on the ball. Kyle coming in. That was a great timely double team by Kyle. She came in when she needed to come without getting the foul. She wasn't late. She was on time. And as a result, she got a hand down right when Jackson turned around with the ball because Jackson didn't know the double was coming. This is a chess game right now. We're seeing yeah. sub after sub. Faith too late to get to the table, so she can't get in. With 1.2, they bounce it in, and it's intercepted by Jariah Warren. So after all those chess pieces move, it's Tennessee, a 10-point lead going into the fourth. Gators looking for their 800th program win. Tennessee trying to continue their dominance in this all-time series. Ten minutes to decide it and a 10-point Big Orange lead. Travel to College Station, both those games on New Year's Day. So both teams will have New Year's Eve in an airplane. Actually, not Tennessee, but a lot of teams around the country will be traveling. <laughs> As Warren almost threw it away. Florida's gonna have to have some quick responses offensively in this game, a 10-point game. You're gonna have to get stops and scores. Would have been nice for them if they could have gotten a quick score to, to make this an eight or possibly a seven point game. Horse it inside, nice. Sarah yeah. Puckett had the advantage on Rimdahl underneath. Yeah, a mismatch down low, Puckett. Birdie Rimdahl was first back, so she had to defend and she was front side defense. So they just lobbed it right over her head for an easy bucket. That's when a Florida big has to come and relieve her because that's a mismatch every time. A good attack again by Birdie Rimdahl, and as a result, gets a rebound, and then and Nina Ricard, someone for Florida, they'd really like to see a couple of her shots fall here in the fourth quarter. It's been the cold start to quarters for the Gators. Tennessee scored the first seven of the third. And KK Deans for Florida is still uh, on the bench, and as I say that, she's getting up to come in. I wonder if Kelly Ray Finley has an earpiece on here in the broadcast. <laughs> He's looking over and thinking, she's not in the game right now. We get a foul here. And of note for Tennessee, as you see KK Deans at the table, they elect to go with Horston here, and Jackson will start the fourth on the bench. And just look at the, I mean, the height in their huddle. And when Tennessee huddles, they've got such a height advantage, except for Walker, who sits at 5'8", everybody else six foot and over. Horston spins in, the call travel. The defense by Florida doubling down. Horson trying to get away with it. Can't get it off in time. Horston has fought her way to her 13th game in double figures. Seven of her 10 coming after half. Time out on the floor. Tennessee will take it. Tennessee. Look at some of the particulars from that game last year. Largest margin of victory over an AP top 10 team. That was in program history and the largest loss for a Lady Vol team in the AP poll era. Now that, that bottom one is a crazy stat. And, and all of that from 1976, to, that's the biggest deficit they've ever had. Birdie getting her first three. Oh, no, I thought it was, they were yeah, excited. Long two. Long two. And then say now with 18 points, thought maybe she had hit back to a career high. One short of a career high. Does she have oh. it here? Rimdahl back to Deans. In a crowd, Ricards for the career high. You bet! A 
Fury! And this place is erupting. What a big play. Birdie Rimdahl has come to play in the SEC. She is here and here to stay. She says, hey, I am, I, I know what I need to do for this team and that's score right now and that is what she's doing. 21. 21. <laughs> on cue, 21 points. <laughs> Horston to try and silence the crowd. Rebound Deans. Seven point game. Ricards flags it down. Warren, kick out, Rimdahl another. Oh, this place was ready. What a find. What an unselfish play by Jariah Warren to find the hot hand in Bertie Rimdahl, who is wide open. Momentum for the moment wow. swings to the orange and blue. Stripling down the lane, the call of foul on Rashea Kyle. Yeah, that was a, a lot of, uh, from here, looked like the arm, but man, I mean, armed her up in this place. Excited when Bertie Rimdahl got that ball. I mean, but I, I just can't credit Jariah Warren enough. She probably could have gone in maybe and got a two, but she split the defense in and then knew Bertie was on the other side and found her. And Only see, three of her 11 attempts have come from three tonight yeah, in, that 20, I, I, in those I mean, 21 points. Look at the efficiency, eight of 11. And like you talked about, only one from the three-point line. 21 points, career high. And if that's something they can get in the SEC from her, game in and game out, or at least you know double high double-figure scoring, it's really going to help this Florida program. She's had some really good performances where she shot the lights out, but I think everything considered, this is probably the best yeah. game of her career. All around, and the way that she's driving the basket, her shot selection on the floor. You know, they've not been open three, so she drives to the basket. When she has open three, she's taking them. I mean, there might be a couple where they probably thought she should shoot it, and she didn't. So even more opportunities for her here in the fourth quarter. But it is a great game for her, like you talked about, probably one of her best here in the Florida uniform. Deans comes to rescue the basketball. They wanted to travel, I believe. They Kelly did. Harper oh, is did. beside herself at the moment. And the fans behind her. You see that called a lot, that quick shuffle step for the two yeah. feet. A, a lot of players do a quick, a quick move because it's what they see. And, you know, it's what, especially, you know, in higher leagues and the NBA, WNBA, you see a lot of that first step that's, you know, given without a travel. Dean's a quiet night. Cyclone spin to the rack. And sometimes when she has a quiet night, she goes off for a quick 10 points for Florida. Once a 13-point Tennessee lead, trimmed down to six. Now, what a game. Open up the SEC season. Six-point game here in the fourth. Good catch down low by Orton. That's tough to that stop. That is really horse it down low. What a great catch. That's where you see her athleticism and size to her advantage. Deans Lopers inside, and one. Around three Tennessee players, she gets that up and finishes with a chance to go to the line. You can see on the drive, weaving in and out. The backside help comes from Horston, and the excitement on her face, she knows how important this game is. Now 14 away from 1K in KK's career. And a lot of Ks. Yeah. She'd like to get to that 1,000 point mark tonight be big. So a long way to go. Ten points now. Scratches the double figures. Completes the three-point play. And can Tennessee have an answer offensively? And then on the flip side, can Florida have an answer defensively and get a stop? You have to think the look every trip down, yeah. Horston or Jackson. Absolutely. Take your pick. Where does the double come from if you're Florida, if you're going to help off? Duke gets a hand in there. Loose ball, Horston backs in on Ricards into the lane, contorts oh, one oh, up and falls down. All the way in, you just see the sheer size. Horston had it on the wing and she just backs herself down in like a post player and finishes right around the you know, charge circle. Uh, she's just so talented offensively. Consistent crowd silencer tonight. Nice Great look from Rimdahl. Uh, she's got the respect that the double team comes on her drive. She's unselfish and gives it up. Striplin had a lane to yeah, the rim. She did. I, that's why I was going to see if she went ahead and took it, but she goes back up, runs some clock down. Jackson. And the gets, I was going to say, does she get the return they're looking for? Deans. Rimdahl trailing. Deans hooks it too low for Rimdahl. 
Horston got fouled. Boy, what a turn of events. He got numbers on one end. Yeah. You get a bad pass and turns into two free throws at the other. Yeah, and that transitional push by Florida, KK Dean's had the ball, kind of tried to go over her head, but slammed it down a little bit too quick so Birdie couldn't get it, and then Tennessee gets it on the flip side. And, you know, you're right, the ball's been in Horston's hands or Akia Jackson's hands, the last possessions for Tennessee, and you know, she finds herself in the free throw line. The last time down, she just backed herself down for two. Horston only played five first half minutes. She scored 15, she's six of 10 from the floor. Splits a pair. She knew that was coming off. She left as soon as it hit the rim. Good pressure from Jordan Walker. Deeds has come alive in the fourth, dribbling out of her shoes, out of bounds. Slipping on the floor, trying to turn the corner. Tennessee hits a little double, they switch on it. Florida can't convert offensively. Going to have to try to get another stop here in a really close battle. 12th Gator turnover. Tennessee's, for the moment, survived 19 turnovers. Gators trapping backcourt. And when you're trapping like this for Florida, you've got to get back defensively. Tennessee slows it down so you can recover and find your player. Jackson, the quick rip through, contorts, dances off. And that's where Florida's got to be careful. I, that is a straight rip through. She's going to take it like that. If you have a big on her at that three-point line, you're going to have to get down in that stance because she'll shoot it from outside, but you know, she wants to drive to the basket. Fit dude second. And the, the help side coming. They called the foul on Faith Duke, but Kyle just a little bit late on the drive to the basket. Jackson nearing her Lady Vol high, which is 26 against Rutgers. Now it's 24. Eight point Lady Vol lead. Rimdahl closed out by Jackson. Quick first step, kick it out, Deans. Quick load up, rips it out. And what a great, you, thought, you said it, quick first step by Bertie Rimdahl. Got the defense behind her, which means it had to help off KK Deans, who was in the corner and had just enough room to get the three off. Great offensive play by the two guards in Florida. Now 10 away from 1,000 career points for Deans. Big defensive trip here. We get a whistle and a foul. And they, and they called that on. Rindle. If so, that's her fourth. You could see the frustration for Kelly Ray Finley. What to do here with 4.20 left. And, and the ref was saying, and you see KK Dean's trying to go ask, uh, he was saying a one, two hand touch. Sometimes they allow the first, and then when the second comes, they're gonna blow the whistle. But you know, you see Kelly Ray Finley deciding you know, what we're gonna do. And obviously, pretty Rimdale staying in the ball game, but discussing how they're gonna you know, use her now defensively, because expect Tennessee to kind of go at her when also, she's on defense. expect Florida to use a timeout here. Yeah, they're, they're coming across the line and they're gonna call it. So Walker, 48% foul shooter, hits both. And now a seven point game with a timeout on the floor, Florida takes it. So you have Rimdahl playing with four, Deans is heated up in this quarter, and Tennessee continues to get that consistent production from Jackson and Horson. And you look at Rimdahl, the numbers, 21 points, a career high, eight of 11 from the floor, hitting her first three in this half. And she's done it from drives to the basket, only one three on her game, but she's, you know, attack, attack, attack mentality, and that has earned her the respect of the double team coming off of it, where now she's passing the ball off and finding open players. I mean, she really has done it all for this Florida team here tonight, keeping them in this game, now just a seven point game. Five points in this fourth quarter. Tennessee ballooned up a double figure advantage and it was Rimdahl continued to chip away and make this about a five point game at one point. And, and I mean, without question, you've got to keep her in the ball game here, four minutes left. Even though she has those four fouls. Ricards gets it back. Drives in on Horston, we'll get a quick whistle. And that's one of the things that Nina Ricards does really, really well, attacking from the opposite side, driving. So she's on the left-hand side, kind of using a little brush screen and getting into the paint. 
or sometimes without the brush screen because she has such a quick first step. But because she got her defense again on her back, the help side defense came, and that's where the foul came from. Barnes misses the first. Foul situation. Tennessee is in the bonus, so they'll shoot for the final four and change. Tennessee with three team fouls. And coming down this stretch, every point is going to matter. Floors have to step to the line and knock down those free throws. And a very good free throw shooter in Nina Ricards unfortunately missed the first for her. Jackson surfs the end line, right around reverse. And that's the second time she's done that. Floors going to have to make an adjustment defensively to slow her down on that drive. Ties a Lady Vol high for Jackson with 26. Deans is doubled. Looking, will just lean in, had the alleyway, missed the banker, and Jasmine Powell has the Tennessee board. Every trip, Brittany, it's been Rakia Jackson or Jordan Horston. Yep, but, uh, didn't see a lot of it in the first half. We've seen a lot of it here in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter where they know where they want to go down the stretch when it's a closer game. Jasmine Franklin at the high post. Horston demands the basketball. Pick and roll, Jackson. Slides past Duke, can't scoop it true, but we'll get two. And where did the two-man game go? Horston and Rikia Jackson on that right-hand side. They were playing off of each other, a little screen, pick and roll. Uh, I mean, just two, what a deadly combination that you have in a scoring threat on that right-hand side. Yeah, those two knew exactly yeah, they, how that possession was gonna end. Horston demanded the basketball with about seven to shoot. And everybody else just kind of went off to the left-hand side, leaving them the right side of the floor. New Lady Vol high for Rakia Jackson with 27. And the problem is you, you don't want to foul her. She's an 83% free throw shooter. And hits both. And it's back up to double figures, a 10-point game. Haters playing without their top scorer, Leilani Correa. And Jordan Merritt, one of their top forwards. And Expect to have both back soon. Sorry, that was a play where Bertie Rimdahl was on that left-hand side. Faith Dute has to connect on that on-ball screen to give her a little bit more room. Faith Dute too strong. Rochelle and Kyle, Good can tip. she secure it? No. Gators go one and done. Tennessee's hit their last three. Go inside for Franklin. That's going to be offensive. offensive foul. Yeah. The hook. Uh, it was the hook with an elbow around. Great positioning down low in Franklin. She got that position on the block. Kyle's going to have to push her off the block. Don't let her get that low. See the frustration from Kelly Harper. Just keep a, a camera on Kelly Harper throughout the entire game. The many moods of, of Kelly. Both coaches. Animated. Yeah. Get a foul here. That's Walker. So both teams have five team fouls, so free throws from here on out with 2.26 to go. And, and that's why free throws matter. Uh, down the stretch in games like this, they're even more important. You look at both teams percentage-wise, Gators 71%, Tennessee 70% as a team. And Rache and Kyle, 68% foul shooter. Yeah, both Tennessee and Florida, while they're at 70 and 71%, they have players on their team who are a pretty high free throw percentage that really brings that up. Meanwhile, Deans was trying to calm down Rache and Kyle. There was some talking back and forth. Also, one of the officials was trying to calm down Rache and Kyle as well. Gators have missed seven free throws tonight. That's huge. And right now, can Florida get a stop? It's not a game where you can just trade possessions back and forth and wait to the end. Florida has to get some stops. Horst hit the shovel off for Franklin. Big That's orange on their feet. That was a great find. Deans rims out. Gators might run out of time. 
And Tennessee taking some of that clock. I'm saying, hey, we're going to slow this down offensively. We're going to burn this clock down a little bit. Another touch. Jackson. Horston. Good rebound on the backside by Jariah Warren. Get a foul on Jasmine but Franklin. calling it. Oh, is that actually Jariah Warren? We'll see. It was Jariah Warren who picks up the foul. See the energy again and the emotion for Kelly Harper telling her team to finish. Continues to say, we're still finding our, de our identity, but getting closer by the day and by the game. And, and wanting to find it on that defensive end. They're getting those stops that they need down the stretch. And then on the offensive end, finding the open player. Everybody knew the ball was going to be in you know, one of the two main players, but then they hand that right off to Franklin on the drive on the last offensive possession and then just can't secure the rebound from Florida. And Tennessee finds themselves at the foul line. Also a chance to survive a game where you have 20 yeah. turnovers as an offense. And the Gators need to get some of their horses back. Playing really undermanned tonight. They had a real quick call across the time stripe. Jeremiah yeah. Warren picks it up. And Florida not trying to foul, just trying to play heavy defense to turn over Tennessee. But, I mean, what a... What a battle by both teams tonight. And, you know, Tennessee battling back in the first, having a lot of turnovers, uh, still in the game, having a lot of turnovers, but fighting back to get the lead that they have. And then Florida really never going away, always finding a way offensively to get back in it and keep it, you know, fairly close. This is and one always of with those a chance in the fourth. Classic games where the box score isn't necessarily it, yes, an it, indicator of how the game was played. I mean, this could be no. a 17-point differential in its final in the at end, the free throw line. And yet, it was not played that way until the last, what, two minutes of the, the fourth quarter. Right now, a 14-point differential. Horston goes down to the ground, doesn't get a whistle. And we'll get a foul here on Jasmine Franklin, so free throws here for Warren. You can see the competitiveness that both teams are playing with. It, despite the score right now, they are both playing really aggressive defense. Kelly Ray Finley last year took this program to a whole new level. Most of it as an interim head coach. Became the full-time head coach late in February. And, and that's, yeah, I think free throws might be something addressed by this Florida program, especially now that it's SEC play. Like, and it's something that they want to be very good at. They were they improved their free throw percentage last year immensely. In this game, have missed, what, eight free throws? Yeah. 15 of 23 from the line. Tennessee, with a win, will have won five of their last six. Heading into Alabama at home on Sunday. Franklin turns in the lane, three-second three call. Three-second violation, Florida basketball. Kelly Harper took this group to a sweet 16 last year, won 25 games, had an AP ranking as high as four. They've had three consecutive third-place finishes in the SEC, and we know the standard around Tennessee yeah. is the top spot. And that's it what is. Kelly Harper signed up for. But she has brought more consistency to this program over the last few years. This year playing the toughest schedule in the country. If there's yeah, any really, team that's ready for their conference play, it's the team in orange. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, challenging her team in the pre-SEC season. Eight and six entering. We played five teams currently in the AP Top 10. Six total teams that are currently in the AP Top 25. Now, they haven't won any of those games, which is an issue, but but it's the atmosphere that you play in. So you're playing in, in big time, you know, arenas, big time competition. You go out to Stanford and, you know, really winning that game until the last of it. And that, that was a tough one, I think, for them to play the way that they did and then finish the way that they did in that game. But the competition, the atmosphere that you're playing in makes a big difference. And I think moving forward in SEC play, you might see more Jackson and Horston on the floor at the same time, yeah. maybe to start games. I mean, it's a 
lethal combination that they have. It has it's been you tonight. have to, to decide where you're double teaming off of when they're driving to the basket if you get beat. I mean, we saw you know, numerous times where Jackson is specifically on the left-hand side and would just catch at the three-point line, rip through for a left-handed layup. And back-to-back -back possessions for Tennessee, I think it was in the fourth quarter where they needed some butt points, and they went straight to her. So you're either going to have to figure out a way to defend that or come off the help side defense a little bit quicker. Kia Jackson, too shy of 30 tonight. Jordan Horston with 15. 12 of those after halftime. Kia Jackson is a special scoring talent. Those are the numbers at Mississippi State over three seasons. One rebound away from a double-double. No one in this game actually has double-digit rebounds, despite Tennessee's 45 rebounding yeah. effort. Yeah, that's a big number. Yeah. 45 to 27. As Teens just ripped it away. A little window dressing at the end. Teens a little closer to 1,000. And Florida picking up the pressure in the full court. A little 10 point game, not fouling. No. But still pressuring up. I like that Florida is still looking to pressure defensively, not just backing down. Tennessee doesn't have to shoot here. The shot clock is turned off, so they can essentially dribble this one out. Rimdahl, career night, 21 points. Gators had four in double figures, just not enough stops down the stretch. Jordan Horst and Rakia Jackson, they showed why they're two of the best in the SEC. Tennessee, a lot of preseason expectation, especially in the league, off to a 1-0 SEC start. 10-point road win. Well, what a great game here to open the SEC. Tennessee fought hard, Florida fought hard. It was a great battle. It'll be interesting to see how this season turns out for both teams. To watch the entire game on replay, as well as other games on the SEC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good start to league action for Tennessee. 10-point road win here in the Swamp. For our entire crew, Brittany Davis, I'm Kyle Crook saying so long and good night. Fans, we'll see you back here for more.